Welcome to the Space Dreamers Podcast, a Sumadre production. Hello, Space Dreamers. Welcome to a bonus episode. Please join me in welcoming today's guest, host, and creator of the Chapter 3 podcast, Bethany Pullen. Chapter 3 podcast is a podcast for readers of science fiction, fantasy, and romance. I discovered it when I was browsing the podcast app and contacted Bethany via Instagram for a collaboration. The Chapter 3 podcast is a bi-weekly podcast with a new episode releasing every other Tuesday everywhere you get your podcasts, all the standard channels. Uh, Bethany is also on YouTube. Uh, She has a YouTube channel all about books called Beautifully Bookish Bethany. And you can also find the Chapter 3 podcast on Instagram and Twitter as well at Chapter 3 Podcasts. And that's a three like the number. Um, What you're about to hear is our discussion about upcoming sci-fi releases that we are excited about. Uh, bookstagramming, podcasting about books, and a short story by Joanna Russ titled When It Changed. Now, I have, I think I've mentioned on this podcast that I'm, I'm considering, or I've pretty much decided that I'm going to cover Joanna Russ and James Tiptree Jr., who in real life it was named Alice Sheldon. Uh, these are two sci-fi writers um, who were writing around the same time. Uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, obviously both female writers, uh, and that's what attracted me to them was uh, I need to read more female science fiction and uh, or science fiction written by women, and um, also the time period. Uh, obviously, since this podcast started all about Arthur C. Clarke, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoy science fiction written in the 60s, 70s, mostly 60s and 70s. So Joanna Russ and James Tiptree Jr. while also being uh, canons and f- feminism, part of the feminism canon, um, also wrote science fiction in the time period that I most enjoy. So I've been, most recently I've been collecting Joanna Russ novels uh, and James Tiptree Jr. novels, uh, as well as collections of short stories, so that I can cover them once I'm done with the Clark saga. And... Um, so Bethany and I were discussing what we might want to talk about in this episode for our little collaboration, and I said, well, why don't we read what I have read or what I have found to be considered Joanna Russ's most famous short story. It's pretty short. It's called When It Changed, which I realized while reading and while looking at my copy of The Female Man that When It Changed is, in fact, uh, the precursor to uh, female man. It's the same main character. It seems like it's about the same thing. Really interesting, but it's a very, very interesting story. And it's, I, I feel it's interesting to hear, uh, Bethany and myself talking about it. I don't know. Cause it's a very strange, um, story. It's very interesting. It's very, I guess you could say political. So it's interesting to hear two people who don't know each other, uh, talk about a book that's kind of I don't know, maybe controversial. I mean, I don't even know. I haven't even really decided what I even think of the story. And I think I'll save my, my strong critiques and opinions for when I read the actual full novel. Check out Bethany's podcast, chapter three podcast. I discovered it organically, literally just browsing, looking for podcasts about sci-fi and it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's not the same sci-fi that I cover typically, she likes to talk about science, uh, science fiction in addition to fantasy and uh, romance novels. So, I, I mean, I, I've heard that romance novel, is like, a ro- like romance is a genre, but like every story has romance in it, right? So I was very interested uh, to speak to a romance, romance genre fan and kind of pick her brain about like what even is romance. And she gives a pretty good definition. But anyway, I'm going to shut up. Please check out this episode. Thank you for joining me since you're here already and listening to this. Uh, Enjoy this uh, little conversation between myself and Bethany Pullen, host and creator of Chapter 3 Podcast and fellow sci-fi lover. Here we go. 
First up, we have two books coming out May 18th. We have In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. This, in, this one is a fantasy standalone about a pansexual blood mage who reluctantly teams up with an undead spirit to start a rebellion among the living and the dead. It sounds fantastic. I really loved this author's last book, and I'm excited to see how this one turns out. Then, also on May 18th, is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This is a contemporary romance about a matchmaking company that uses DNA to predict compatibility. But what happens when our heroine is matched up with the stuck-up, stubborn founder of the company? I hear good things about this. It should be fun. Then, two more titles, both coming out May 25th. First is Etherbound by E.K. Johnston. This is a YA space adventure about survival and self-determination set on a family-run interstellar freighter and a mysterious remote space station. E.K. Johnston's known for writing some of the Star Wars novelizations, um, and this is another YA kind of sci-fi story. It looks interesting. And then lastly, we have How to Find a Princess by Alyssa Cole. This one is a queer Anastasia retelling featuring a long-lost princess finding love with the female investigator tasked with tracking her down. Alyssa Cole is one of my favorite romance authors. I'm really looking forward to this one as well. So go check those out. All of them, as always, will be linked in the show notes. And please join me in welcoming Jared to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, glad you kind of reached out. It's fun. The first time I'm having another podcaster on, which is exciting. If you want to briefly introduce yourself to our listeners and uh, share your pick for an up exciting upcoming release, that'd be great. Certainly. Uh, as Bethany said, my name is Jared Parisi. I am the host, creator, producer of the podcast, The Space Dreamers. Um, I, my podcast is strictly science fiction uh, and more specifically hard science fiction. Uh, I'm not particularly a fantasy uh, lover, um, but um, so basically hard science fiction, if you or your listeners don't know, is science fiction based on existing fact and or theory um, and a great or at least a well, it is great. And also a uh, a perfect example of this would be The Martian mm -hmm. by Andy Weir. Um and it's that's a perfect segue to my upcoming pick, which is uh, a novel by I believe Andy Weir's third novel. Uh, it's called Project, yeah, I think so. yeah, Project Hail Mary. And I have not yet read Artemis. I would like to one day, but mm -hmm. it, it's not um, it's not grabbing at me. I mean, I loved, I really did like The Martian. I really did. I read it before the movie came out. You know, blah blah blah. It's very good, but it's it's more so on the humor than the hard sci-fi. But the hard sci-fi is certainly there. Yeah. Um. And and basically, like, I guess I'll just explain like why why I even made a podcast. Like, I, so when did you start podcasting? <laughs> uh, I think September is when I started. September of twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. So I was a little bit after that. So I started yeah. in January. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it came from. Uh, my just absolute love and adoration for the author, Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, he, mm -hmm. He's the reason I got into science fiction all the way back uh, when I was in college. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it was kind of born out of this idea in my head. So basically, last year I read, um, I finished my final Arthur C. Clarke novel. And in my mind, I was like, well, this took me 12 years to read every novel. I kind of want to reread them. I, I wanted to reread them and record my rereading. So so the, that's what I'm doing. I'm reading Arthur C. Clarke from the beginning, his first ever novel in 1947, mm -hmm. up until his most recent novel, which was in the late 90s. Okay. I mean, the, I think that's really cool. I have actually never read Arthur C. Clarke. I feel like that's a gap in my sci-fi reading. But I, you know, I know, <laughs> you know, he's a, a big deal. I've seen... 2001 a space odyssey the film yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> which was um an experience yeah but yeah i mean i think that's really I, I think that's cool and i think in general you know content creation can be a great way to share your love of something and find an audience out there that also loves the same thing you do yeah 
Yeah, and like through the podcast, I discovered like you know a Facebook group all about Arthur C. Clarke. You know, it's oh, it, cool. what's so cool about this about podcasting. You know, before I started, I knew I loved Arthur C. Clarke. There's there's no question there. But mm-hmm. as I go and as I do all these new things I've never done before, like I just I'm learning all these other things, all these other cool things, all these other cool authors. You know, on my podcast, yeah. we do sci fi movies too. We always talk about at least one movie. And oh, fun. and I've just been introduced to all these random movies because you just search like what's a good sci fi movie that I've never seen and I've just been introduced to all these cool things that I never was introduced to before. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's it's been interesting for me because I think I came into this, I you know I I kind of it, it was a new creative challenge for me. I guess I've been doing book videos on YouTube for almost four years and thought it would be fun to try doing a podcast to do more kind of long form discussions, the types of things that you can't really do as easily in video content. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. I feel like it's been a little bit of a learning curve, but kind of figuring out what I want to, where I want to take it. And I've definitely been more topical and wanted a little bit of a more broader selection of genres to pull from but i also read more broadly whereas i think it's i think it's kind of cool the idea of going systematically through the bad you know the work of an author right it's kind of like i I would have done that anyway so i just figured like why not record it and not only that it's like now i can't really remember like what the early uh arthur c clark novels were like so in rereading them and recording my thoughts i can just be like wait was that novel good i can't remember i'll just listen to my own podcast (laughs) Yeah, I mean, well, I do think there's something to that, you know, things like writing reviews and talking publicly about things can also help you just in remembering yeah. more about the things that you're reading and retaining more of it. I agree. Can I um can I do one more recommendation? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So, are you familiar with an author uh named Charles Yu? Uh, sounds familiar, but not Well, I can't it's okay. it's okay. <laughs> oh yeah. He he's great. So so he his first uh novel was called um How to Live Safely in a Science Fictional Universe. And it's huh. it's very um it's very tongue in cheek. It it has like the really good sci fi because this this gentleman is also a I can't maybe a physicist. He's a doctor, hmm. I has a PhD, I'm not sure. But <laughs> um anyway, How to Live Safely in a Science Fictional Universe is hilarious. It's about a it's a basically about a guy who runs a time machine repair company so if you break your time machine in some random time period it could be anywhere and any when he has to go find you and help you and fix your time machine and he's kind of like miserable and hapless and he has a dog and it's it's just it's really funny but anyway then he also put out two collections of short stories which were also absolutely excellent and hilarious but his newest novel, which I have been fiending for, came out last <laughs> year, and it's called Interior Chinatown. And it is oh, it is. I feel like I I might actually have this on my list of books to read. Yeah, it it made it kind of a splash last year when it came out. Um, yeah, it's it's. I would not. Uh, I would not call it science fiction. It is certainly weird. It is not <laughs> normal. It is written. It's written like a script basically for a television show but it's okay. but it's technically a novel um and it's all about basically what it means to be an asian american and what it means more so to be an an asian actor in america interesting it's it's very interesting it's very good and it's relatively new so i suggest anyone check it out yeah great that's a great recommendation we'll put that put all of these in the show notes that sounds cool. great really yeah. interesting thank you awesome you're welcome um, okay. So I guess we've talked about some of this, but I, I'm curious, what has your experience with podcasting been like? Um, I, I wonder how it is for other people because I, I feel like I'm, I, I don't know, like I know people are listening, but I'm used to having much more direct interaction from viewers through the YouTube platform. And I don't see that with podcasts as much, although I think people must have it in some way. And I'm just, I'm curious, like how, what your experience has been so far. Uh, Specifically as a, like, what's the response been or what's it like just to operate and run a podcast? Yeah. Like what, what, well, I mean, I guess we could talk about that too, but what's, what is the, what is the response been? What have you seen? Have you gotten 
interaction with people who are listening to the podcast? Is it more just you're seeing the numbers? So I, I am seeing the numbers grow. And, and for me personally, I, I don't care how fast they grow just as long as like each month is a bit higher than the last one. That's what I prefer. Um, yeah. That's what I like to see. Uh, but so I would the most the most meaningful interaction that I've had, and I've not had very many, um, mm-hmm. would be basically. So I have an Instagram as well. I'm at, and that's where I found you. So it's at right. yes at the Space Dreamers. Um, and what I love is the people who find me on Instagram, and because they heard me say on my podcast that I'm on Instagram. So that that's mm-hmm. like proof, and like maybe not a face, but you know, like I don't know, an Instagram account, a person. <laughs> who is uh, confirming that they found your podcast, you know, not through marketing, not through yeah. some kind of promotion. And, and, and one person, and actually it, it, also my sister uh, made these pins for me. Uh, there's like, it's like 30 pins she gave me that have my logo on them. Oh, cool. So I made a post uh, and I was just like, if anyone wants these, you could totally have them. I'll ship it to you. And someone did, Someone who found me through the podcast, not through Instagram, saw that post and asked for them. So I mailed them to that person and they were totally excited about it. And and th- so that was just really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It, yeah. It's, it's interesting how people can sort of find you because I never really know. You never really know how but it, it it seems like it's its own kind of world podcasting i feel like i'm still kind of learning yeah have you <laughs> how everything functions <laughs> have 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 you noticed like carryover from your youtube following yeah there's definitely some um but i also feel like there's people who follow the podcast who don't who don't and people on youtube who will definitely plenty of people on youtube who don't follow the podcast so it is interesting to see that there's some crossover but i also feel like there are different audiences and different people kind of go different places so yeah and it's it's been interesting and plus i mean youtube and obviously video and audio are like kind of you know that's different they're opposites um but like when it comes to how you consume the two mediums i mean video you don't have to watch it but you probably want to watch it because it's video whereas audio it's like the best thing about podcasts is that you can do something with your hands while you're mm-hmm. listening, you can look at something else while you're listening. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, yeah. I think no, a lot of people agree with that too. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's great for multitasking. I mean, I do audiobooks similarly as well, but yeah, podcasts, audiobooks, anything like that's great because you can kind of do other things while you're listening. And um, I, I do have a few podcasts I listen to, which is, which is fun. Yeah. Um, I believe I asked you this on Instagram, but I forgot and I'm curious <laughs> and maybe maybe there are listeners who want to know who are fans of you and just don't know what's, sure. what's, uh, how did you come to the title of your podcast? Yeah, no, this, okay. This is a good question because I don't think I've actually talked about it publicly on here. So, um, I knew going in that I wanted to talk about sci-fi fantasy and romance. There are three of my favorite genres and I wanted to kind of talk about all of them. And I was trying to think of what would be a cool, name that would give some nods to that kind of genre crossover and so chapter three comes from a song in beauty and the beast um where it says she but she won't discover that it's him till chapter three and so i thought it was kind of fun because it's it's subtle but beauty and the beast is kind of a fantasy romance crossover and that is where it came from chapter three (laughs) that's very cool i love specific i love very specific references i think that they're very cool because you're only gonna because it's just fun when people ask and then you tell Mm -hmm. them you know yeah yeah well it's fun too because it's not super obvious i feel like if people don't you know aren't thinking about it or don't know they might not know where it comes from and it still feels relevant because it's book related so i think it's fun right okay well what about you because yours is space dreamers so i mean it it seems pretty closely linked to what you're talking about is there anything more to it or is it just kind of yes so arthur c clark's first novel is titled prelude to space um it was written 22 years before uh humans went to the moon and it's it's basically just all about how we would get to the moon um and its original title was the space dreamers Ah. but it's no longer the title but and the reason I 
I I find myself drawn to that that name is because because of what it references. Basically, what it references is the is people who have never been to the moon who are working on going to the moon, they are the space dreamers. It's you are mm-hmm. dreaming of going to space. So mm-hmm. I consider myself a space dreamer. Like in reality, I will probably never go to space because of all the factors, age, all that stuff. But right. I consider myself a space dreamer. And one of the things we do in my podcast is determine in every novel who is a space dreamer. Hmm. Because not, you know, they're all sci fi, they're all mostly about space. But it's interesting how many different conflicts Clark can come up with that where so many characters aren't space dreamers. You know, it's mm-hmm. I, I find it very inter- interesting. For instance, uh, the the sixth novel that we covered, there was only one space dreamer, which is a total which is, you know, not common in a Clark novel. But it was fun to discover that. That's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that's cool. Also, I don't think I realized Arthur C. Clarke wrote for such a long period of time. Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty remarkable. Uh, yes, he was. So that's one of the, So I guess another thing we talk about podcasting is like, so you have guests, and I would assume you do most of yours over um, like a, a Zoom or a Zencaster as we are now. Yeah. But, and, but I, one of the things that stopped me from podcasting initially was that I didn't have anyone... I don't see I read so much I read I read like a book a week and and I have plenty of people like friends and people in my life who like science fiction but I don't there's no one who's going to read that much with me and and read specifically this one author Mm -hmm. so what I did was I recruited my two sisters well I I recruited two of my sisters and my sister-in-law who all like science fiction to be Mm -hmm. my rotating guests Oh, that's cool. So our guest hosts. So basically none of them have to read every novel with me. They're kind of reading like a, one novel every f- couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And only if they want to. Uh, I don't. I certainly am not going to force this on anyone. And they, they offered, which was very cool, which I totally appreciate. Because I need someone to talk to. You know what I mean? I can't just, yeah. I can't just talk to a microphone about science fiction. All that information <laughs> is available to us on Wikipedia. It's more interesting to have a conversation, as I'm sure you yeah. agree. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think doing this on your own would be less interesting and more challenging for sure. Yeah. And, and I, I've got to, I feel egotistical to just talk about books, you know, <laughs> as if you are the authority. I mean, you know, we do it. It's, it's funny because I don't have a problem doing it on video, but I just feel like it's what I'm doing there is different. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in a podcast, it's like this longer discussion. And how do you, know, how do you do, how, how do you, I've, I did not know that you had a YouTube channel, so I didn't check it out. Like, what's that oh, all about? Cool. Uh, books also. <laughs> but like, how do you format um, it for video rather than audio? Yeah. I mean, I think it's different. There's, um, it, there, so we have our, our community, we call it the booktube community, which is, uh, you know, YouTubers who talk about books. Okay. And, you know, there's some video types that are more sort of common staples of the community. Uh, and then other things that it might be more creative. So, I, you know, I do some standalone book reviews, although I'm a little picky about which ones, just because ironically, they don't always do as well. Uh, but I will do things like talk about my reading plans for the upcoming month and then midway through the month and at the end of the month, I'll talk about all of the books that I've been reading and kind of do mini reviews of them. Um, Sometimes I'll do reading vlog projects. (laughs) So, uh, you know, vlogging, reading a particular book or a collection of books with a theme, you know, people, people do it. Yeah. So I, so I put up two to three videos a week on the YouTube channel and then the podcast is once every two weeks. So that's impressive. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of, but it's now also kind of what I do pretty much full time. I mean, I, I have two young kids, so I parent them and then kind of my full time work at this point is YouTube podcast, et cetera, like all kind of book related stuff. That's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> have you ever worked in a bookstore? Uh, no, I've not. I've spent a lot of time in bookstores, though. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so... I I had the pleasure of working in an independent bookstore uh, in New Hampshire, where I live. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, 
it's it's quite the experience. If you love books, I mean, there's like really no better place to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I, you know, I've always been a big reader. So the, this was fun when I discovered that this was a thing that people did talking about books on the internet. I was like, Oh, I could definitely do that. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. Yeah, right. So why not? And I think it's been fun too. Cause I think with COVID, a lot of people are starting to do things like this that maybe otherwise wouldn't have. It seems like it's kind of prompting people to branch out. Yeah. I mean, I, there's, I, there is literally no, I would not have done this if COVID hadn't happened. Hmm. There, there yeah. are, I mean, it's fucked up to say, but there are silver linings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, and, and I don't, I don't know that I would have, uh, like if this would have pushed it to becoming something I was going to do long, more long-term full-time, um, with, without COVID, I would probably would have tried to start applying it. Yeah. It's like a whole other thing to talk about. <laughs> oh yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so I do want to pivot a little bit because there's a lot we could talk about with this, but we do want to also talk about women writers in science fiction, and we also read a short story in preparation for this episode that we're going to discuss, which I thought was a very interesting story. Yes, I agree. Um, and I had not read from this author before either, so that was that was kind of a cool. I, cool thing. I had not, nor had I. Okay. So, um, so we should, let's, why don't we maybe start, start there. And for anybody listening, it's a very short story, about seven pages long. It's called When It Changed by Joanna Russ. Yep. And again, this will be linked down below for anyone who wants to check it out. Um, what, what were your thoughts on this? I thought it was a really interesting story. Um, I thought I I certainly agree. I I thought it was very interesting. Um, you know, it's it, it. I mean, so basically, I I realized recently while I was just consuming Arthur C. Clarke, uh, mm-hmm. reading Arthur C. Clarke, and doing this podcast, um, that I don't read enough women writers, hmm. um, especially in the science fiction genre. And mm-hmm. I would almost say mostly in the science fiction genre. For instance, my uh, my other favorite genre of literature would be memoir. And mm-hmm. and my favorite memoir writers are almost 100% women. Interesting. So anyway, um, I began searching online for a female science fiction writer that would interest me. Um that that was maybe like along the lines of Clark and and Joanna Russ fills that mostly just because she was writing in the same time period, right? Like sixties, seventies, eighties. So I hit on Joanna Russ, and the, the main reason I hit on her is because it says all over the internet that she's not just a science fiction writer but a feminist writer. Yeah, and and interestingly enough, I just today got a fat stack of books in the mail. One of them is by her, and and on the back it has the genre, and it's science fiction slash women's studies. Interesting. So I'm 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 very curious uh, about yeah. what she has to say. But another thing I want to say about her and and what it's like to research things on the internet is, <laughs> so a lot of reviews of Joanna Russ's work talk about how she just is a seems like a very angry woman. Um, hmm. And and these are not my thoughts. These I'm merely saying what I read uh, mm-hmm. in my research that that she that it that her works are merely important because they are feminist and not because they are quote unquote good or well written science fiction. Interesting. This is and but at the same like I it wouldn't surprise me if those reviews were by men. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's a complicated mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So, and in my research for Joanna Russ. I found that most people cite when it changed as her best short piece of fiction. Okay. So that's why I chose it. Yeah. But anyway, um, what I thought about the story was that, and why I went into that long description and I'm sorry for being long winded was, was that, um, I hate when like someone tells you something about something and then you experience that something and your experience is influenced by what that person said. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. While reading this story, I, I couldn't help but, but sort of 
not agree, but I understand why, why an author might say, or why a reviewer might say that about her work. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's interesting. I think, um, well, and, and I, I guess that's the thing too, is I, I come at it too, from a perspective where I don't know that, you know, women having anger is necessarily inappropriate either. (laughs) Right. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's an, it's a really interesting story. I didn't go into it knowing anything about her or, or her work and since have been kind of looking some things up because I I found it to be a really interesting story. And, you know, for, for, for anybody wondering, it's, it's the short story set on an all female colony on another planet 30 generations after a plague had killed off all of the men um and so the main character is this woman in her 30s who has a wife and three children and they've created this functioning sort of society and we learn like i was actually also impressed at how much she packed into seven pages like she accomplishes a lot yes i i totally agree (laughs) in a very brief um period of time i yeah. And so it it's interesting because it's this society of women and then you have these men sort of coming back and assuming that, you know, every, that these women must be thrilled that there will now be men in their world again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I know like not just thr- like not just thrilled, but like would just have the most uh remorse and hatred towards the time they spent without men yeah you know yeah which i um i i found really really interesting and i uh because it's clear that they've built their own society and their own modes of of government and um you know, and you even get these moments where she talks about her her daughter who's about to become a teenager and talking about there being coming of age ceremonies where young women go into the wilderness and like kill a wild animal and that's how they become women. Like there's, you know, like there's so much that they've built around around it. And it's interesting the, um, the I guess the, the arrogance of coming into that and assuming, oh, don't worry, we're now here to save you. Yeah, I mean... I, you know, short stories are tough. I I don't, I don't always, I'm not drawn to short stories. I, you know, it's, I just feel like there's not enough. There's a lot here, but I don't know if there's enough to, I don't know. I, I feel like we don't know what life was like there before the men showed up or when the men were there, like before they got killed off. Mm hmm I mean... What, what do you yeah, think? I mean, I guess I would say that I think there are um, there seem to be hints towards it, which I thought was was interesting because that, you know, they they talk these men who come talk a lot about saying, oh, we've reached gender. We've achieved gender equality. And as if that should be a reason that that they would want to sort of integrate with them and the main character doesn't believe them. Which to me would signal that they're trying to say, don't worry, things won't be like they were before. The genders are now equal. That was kind of what that signaled to me, which I thought was interesting. Um, so basic, I don't, the, the, what I can't, and I, what I said earlier is sort of, I just can't, I can't help wondering what I would have thought if I didn't already hear what I heard about mm-hmm. this author, you know? And because mm-hmm. when I started reading it, I, I did feel like it was very on the nose. Um, Just very, sometimes it's, it's, it's like if if you're reading something and you know that it's inspired by the real world, Mm -hmm. but it takes place in a fake world, Mm -hmm. it's hard to separate the two. It's hard to say, well, do my biases uh, apply to this story? Because it doesn't take place in a in a world that I'm from, or you know, because it's it's some other planet. It's far in the future if we have the ability to travel there from Earth. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 
And I firmly believe that science fiction, 100%, science fiction, in my opinion, is the most important genre of literature because it allows you to remove yourself from a situation and look at it from someone else's perspective, which is Hmm. a difficult thing for humans to do. Um, Mm -hmm. But sometimes if a story, if you go into a story knowing that it's a metaphor for something that Mm -hmm. is real, I find it hard to separate the two. I would rather discover while reading it what the metaphor was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think what's interesting is I didn't go into it knowing what it was going to be about. Um, so it does make me wonder if kind of how much that impacts your experience. Cause when I, when I started reading for, in, for instance, um, she doesn't make it clear until a little ways into the story, whether the narrator is male or female. Okay. Which I think is, is kind of interesting. Cause so for me, I'm kind of entering it thinking, okay, like, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about your wife you're talking about your daughter about all of these kind of things you're thinking about I'm not sure yet like if you're supposed to be male or female and then later you find out um so it's interesting because like I don't I don't like that like I didn't have sort of my ideas going into it framed already as like this is what the what the story is about um and so I think my experience with it was like, ah, I see. Okay, I see what you're doing. This is interesting. And to me, what's one thing that I think is interesting about science fiction is the possibility of, and, and in some ways, sometimes fantasy as well, but the possibility of imagining a different world or imagining what things might be like under different circumstances. And so I think what's interesting to me about the story is it's, it sort of imagines what a sort of female run utopia might look like. Um, and it's very brief and I wish we got more from it, but she gets a lot of little details in here. And I, I just think the the ideas are very interesting. Okay. I am here to deliver to you a wonderful surprise. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? <laughs> sure. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier today, a fat stack of books came in the mail and uh, I have recently committed and decided that, the next author I cover is going to be Joanna Russ. Um, oh, cool. So I ordered, and what's cool about her too, so Arthur C. Clarke, I literally have to read like 25 books in a row for Arthur C. Clarke, whereas um, Joanna Russ has like six novels, so it's just much <laughs> it's more, easier. yeah, much more reasonable. But, yeah. so her most, have you looked her up at all since like? A little bit, yeah. After I finished this, I, I looked at a few of her books because they looked, they sounded really interesting. And I see, I saw, I see what you're saying too. The reviews are are quite polarized. It's, so, so here's here's my gift to you. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the female man is considered her most famous uh, work, and I believe uh-huh. it's considered her most um, uh, the most belonging in in the feminist canon. And mm. and this is how it opens. This is a full length novel. Mm-hmm. I was born on a farm. I was born on a farm on while away. When I was five, I was sent to a school what? on southern continent. And when I turned twelve, I rejoined my family. Um, what it's 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 the, it's it is a, it's linked yeah it's a full novelization of it's the same it's the same character oh my goodness it's exactly the same it's the same thing oh that's ex- okay I, I think i need to get this book that's so interesting i also love it when when authors do that when they use short stories as a way of like trying out ideas and then turn it into a larger work so yes i agree fully especially when that larger work becomes so amazing and iconic as yeah. 2001 which is based on a less than 10 page short story wow which is just very cool to see the uh, origins yeah no that's fascinating okay oh. I'm, I'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to look up getting a copy of that because that's i i did find this really interesting and I, th- I think it's it's interesting too right because this was written in the 1970s yeah and seeing kind of like because I you know we've gone through multiple waves of like feminist ideas since then and it is really interesting to me also as just like a historical artifact of seeing like what were some of the ideas around like feminism and queerness at during that time yeah yeah um so have you did you research anything about Joanna Russ the human not much I have not um just kind of briefly i know that she that she was an academic and considered a feminist and this is a lot of what she was writing about but i didn't do a lot of in-depth looking looking at her 
yeah, so she she is considered a ch- a champion of feminism, and she was openly gay. Okay, so, but that, that doesn't surprise me. Really. Yeah, and so <laughs> I mean, story. and basically, I, maybe I bring that up just because again, when you learn about something. I mean, it's hard. I mean, in acad- academia, you, you must learn, right, about things before uh, breaking them down. And mm-hmm. But so when you said you didn't know she was a woman in the beginning, I mean, I just because I know who she, the author is, I just I just I just knew that this was a woman then that mm-hmm. this was a lesbian relationship. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's nothing. That's nothing about you know, being gay or straight or anything. That's merely about, you know, the amount of information that we consume before we consume the thing that the information was about. Right. And that is a problem with the internet I have found. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and I don't know that that's necessarily good or bad. It's just different. And so I, I do think it's interesting that if you're just purely basing it on the text without knowing anything else, she takes a while to tell you that information. Um, but if you know going in and maybe that, maybe that would kind of change the way you read it, which I think is, is interesting. Yeah. 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 Huh. Well, I'm, I'm glad to have been introduced to her. Cause I, I do find this sort of thing really, really interesting. Some of I, and, and this is a, you know, a good chunk of the nonfiction I like to read is stuff about like feminist theory. So to kind of dovetails with some of my other interests. Yeah. I mean, and how perfect to combine science fiction and feminism, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. super interesting. I think it's, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, interesting story. Um, Wait, can I, can I, can I, it, can I, I'm sorry. Can I point out one thing that I absolutely like, it's the most minute yeah. detail that I liked in this story. Yeah. Okay. So this sentence right here, uh, electric green trees rushed into our headlights and around the car Mm. electric green trees that that descriptor is amazing and i love it so much and it's because Mm -hmm. trees right are almost always illuminated by what i mean the sun well sun or light but the sun yeah exactly the sun is not made of electricity so to say electric green trees you know that they are being lit by and it's nighttime and that they're being lit by some kind of you know electric either flashlight or headlight oh, i just yeah. love yeah. it it's i just yeah. love that sentence yeah no it's interesting yeah it's uh like i i was just really impressed because i i think it's not easy to pack so much into a short work and the fact that it's only seven pages and there's enough that you could have a whole discussion about it is impressive to me which makes me curious to read more from her yeah absolutely and i firmly believe when it comes to short stories i firmly believe that in order to make a short story impactful, you need a punchline ending. Um, and I think I think this this short story nails it. What do you think about it that does. ending? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think the ending is, um, you know, ominous, I guess is a good word for it. Uh, and I, I mean, it makes me wonder what happens next. It makes me nervous for what's going to happen to their family. And um, I I just think it's. Yeah, it, it's interesting to me that I I can imagine what might come next, and I can also recognize that it didn't have to be that way, you know, that there could be a way for men who maybe actually had learned some things to join them or come in a way that would be more of a partnership instead of a, oh, now we're here, we can take over and we are going to use you to create more children. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, I thought that like the, I, I thought that was, that, that was a lot of, I think what it left me thinking about. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love the final, well, I guess the second to final line. And what I mm-hmm. love about it is that it's, um, it, it relates to the fiction, like the story, but at the same time, like you can take this sentence out of the story and put it anywhere, and no matter who reads it, I think will be impacted by it. I think it's a yeah. it's an excellent sentiment and it's an excellent sentence, and it's take my life, but don't take away the meaning of my life. Mm. And I, I I just feel like I feel like if Joanna Russ was alive today, and I could in, and I could talk to her. I mean, you could talk, you could talk about that line, just that line alone for hours Mm -hmm. and what it means, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I, I love I love that line. I I think that this is a great short story. I think that it, I think what it succeeds most at doing, at least for me, is confirming that I made the right choice in who I'm going to cover <laughs> next. Yeah, I think she seems like a very interesting person to 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 read, and you know, I I'm I'm sure her work maybe based on people's responses to it like maybe it's not perfect but it it gets a response which Absolutely. is saying something yes i agree <laughs> so and yeah. uh and no uh, I'm, and, I'm glad you suggested it it was and uh wait one more thing especially since you are a reader of fantasy so mm-hmm. one of my ult- ultimate nitpicky thing like total pet peeve is when um when i read a novel or whatever and there's a name in it that's just some made up like collection of letters mm-hmm. that I how would I know what that means it's in some or how to pronounce it rather um mm-hmm. and in the female man chapter 2 it says Janine Dadier and right after that second word is how you pronounce it yeah so thank you, Joanna Russ, for yeah. not making me have to guess. Like I'm, right. sh- I'm sure, e- e- like everyone who read uh, Harry Potter prior to it becoming uh, the movies, I'm sure no, there was as many pronunciations of Hermione as there are readers of yes. Harry Potter. Yes. Well, this is why I also get very, very excited. <laughs> uh, the, ner- the nerd in me gets very excited when a fantasy author des- decides to provide a linguistic and pronunciation guide to their in-world names and languages yes i get very excited about that some some <laughs> yeah. some kind of explanation is nice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. doesn't happen all that often but yeah, yeah. so it's it's interesting too because i have you know not read as much classic science fiction i've read a bit but i think a lot of the science fiction i've read has been more modern and um, I have actually read quite a, a lot of female sci-fi authors. And t- I, it's, it's interesting because I'm sort of the flip side of where I, I probably read predominantly women. Something like 70% of my reading is usually female authors across genres. Um, and I, I, I do think one suggestion I might have, because I know you said you prefer more on the the hard science fiction side of things yeah um a couple of interesting people have you read anything by mary robinette kowal no so she has this really interesting series i need to um i need to continue with it actually but it begins with the calculating stars it's the lady astronaut series and it is a alternate history sci-fi series so book one is basically like an alternate history space race if there was a meteor that hit the earth and caused like mass destruction and you end up getting women involved in um early sort of space race things in becoming astronauts okay which is it's 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 very interesting so the first book doesn't have as much of the going to space side of things it's more of the early side of nasa with developing the aeronautics and the science for how you would get into space in the first place and it becomes more important because the earth won't necessarily be livable forever because of this Uh, that it happened okay so that might be an interesting yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Is how many are there? Are there four? Uh, so, f- um, so far there are three. Okay, but I think there might be another one coming out. So far, three are out. Yeah, it does look very cool. I and like in the beginning, what you're saying, like all the uh, science behind how you would go to space or go to the moon, mm-hmm. like that kind of thing, totally intrigues me. I love that kind of thing. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, can so I, can, that can, might can be I, interesting. I mm-hmm. so this is interesting because you mentioned like the Soviets and and we're talking about feminism and all these things. Do you want to hear yeah. a, a disturbing fact about um, the space race? <laughs> sure. So in the year 1961, the Russians put a woman in space, and at that exact same time, in this beloved country that we live in, uh, women uh-huh. were arguing for their right to even be considered candidates. 
Ooh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's the reality. And, and, and yeah. like that, and like what people, and I guess I'm talking to myself earlier, people say that, you know, Joanna Russ was angry and it's like, she was writing at that time and that's what was happening. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't she be angry? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are valid, valid reasons for, for anger and sometimes that can get discounted. So yeah. I, it's, it's 60 years later and I'm a, a privileged man and I'm angry. <laughs> so you like, you know, sixties, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think. So there's other, uh, th- there's a series that I, the the second book in this duology came out that pretty recently and I really love it. And I think it's interesting because it's, um, it's less about the science of going to space and more about empire and communication and like, what it might be to especially in book two of communicating with an alien species that communicates in a completely different way than humans do oh wow which is really interesting um so the first book is uh, a memory called empire by arkady martin a memory called empire a memory called empire and the second book is a desolation called peace and it's really interesting because the first book follows a young woman who is a diplomat being sent from a small uh space station to the seat of power in this sort of galactic empire and is having to navigate the politics of that space and there are there's sort of like political intrigue things happening um so it's it's really it's a really interesting series and the second book as as i said has this first contact thing with a new alien race that communicates in a completely different way and they have to navigate how they're going to handle that. That sounds very interesting. I am looking at the uh, first page of a memory called empire. Mm -hmm. And the second word is like 10 letters long and completely unpronounceable. (laughs) I just think it's funny. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, the, the audio books for these ones are, are, are pretty good, but they are more, more dense. So, um, it's the Tex Kalanli empire in case you're wondering the name of the empire, but yeah. It's it's so interesting, interesting. especially like, so like, especially like if you were a Spanish speaking reader and even if this was translated, you you would pronounce that totally differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just funny. I think it's funny. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that 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 would be another one I would I would recommend. And she's a newer a newer writer, but I, I'm curious to see kind of what else we get from her, just because there's so much happening in the books that she's writing. Yeah, and there's um, I do want to give a shout out to what is I don't I don't read no female sci fi writers because <laughs> probably the greatest science fiction n- novel ever is mm-hmm. Frankenstein. Yeah, and I absolutely adore that book it's a great one yeah i think it's phenomenal and in my fat stack of books today came her only other science fiction novel are you familiar with it no it's called the last man interesting and i think it's like just your standard end of the world story and there's just one dude left alive okay yeah no frankenstein is brilliant it's a really really interesting um really interesting story from kind of a sci-fi perspective yeah, I've read it like so many times. It's yeah. it's like it's it never fails to delight. Mm-hmm. Well, so many questions, right? About like what happens when humans try to play God and what takes science too far. It's like all of those sort of ethical questions. Yeah, and I love. Up in it. I just I love how it's 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 one of those. It's almost like Frankenstein or the the, the monster in the story is teaching Frankenstein about life you know he's he's teaching Mm -hmm. his creator about you know the the best ways to navigate life it's so interesting that the student is really teaching the teacher yeah yeah um okay so i made before this i did make a list of like what were who who are the authors that i would (laughs) say that i would suggest so if you're interested in other suggestions no, no, I, I, um, I, I'd say m- of the two that you suggested, I'm most mm-hmm. interested in the first one. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So, 
one author who I think is doing a lot of really interesting work in blending science fiction and fantasy. Some of her works are just science fiction, but a lot of them are kind of a, a blend where you don't necessarily realize until later into the series that it is science fiction is N.K. Jemisin. Never heard of her. Okay, so she wrote uh, the Broken Earth trilogy is probably what she's best known for. The fifth season is the first book. All three books in the series won Hugo Awards. Okay. And they're very interesting because the, the first book, I would say, reads as if it's more of a fantasy, but by later in the series it's the kind of one that i want to go i want to go back and do a reread actually now knowing what i know because by the end of the series you realize it's actually science fiction and she gets into all of these really interesting in-depth sort of scientific ideas behind the, the things that have that have taken place in this world and how they got there very cool um so that's that's like a i think a very interesting series and there's um people who are able to do this thing called orogeny, which is sort of like affecting the earth, like creating earthquakes. And the, and so there end up being eventually, it seems like a magic system, but then by the end, there are more sort of scientific explanations for why things are happening. So that I just think is an interesting genre blend. Yeah, that sounds really cool actually to me. Yeah. I, I love subtle science fiction. That's my favorite kind of sci-fi. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I I think her books are really brilliant, and they they have a lot of thematic content and strong characters. So there's just a lot there, and they're the sorts of sorts of books that I think you could reread multiple times and learn something different every time you read them. Yeah, I do recognize the cover. I remember that these were actually popular when I was working at that bookstore. Okay, it was like definitely the the book kind of book that we always had a copy on hand. Yeah, <laughs> they're very they're very good. Um, have you ever read yeah. Nola Hopkinson? Uh, no, yeah, no, I have not yet, but I have a couple of her books and I hear really great things about, about her work. Yeah. I'm uh she was one of the writers that I considered. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, the only reason I chose, um, Joanna Russ over her was because of the time period. I, I think that mm -hmm. I'm just more attracted to that time period time in science fiction i suppose mm -hmm. but i'm certainly not a, i'm not opposed to newer authors yeah um, yeah i mean i think um i i think one thing that is a little bit unfortunate is a lot of the the women writers in speculative fiction in from you know sci-fi horror fantasy from that time period have been kind of lost. I read this really interesting nonfiction book called Monster She Wrote that's about women who pioneered horror and speculative fiction. Uh -huh. And uh, it, what's interesting is about that time period, a lot of the women writers were writing in these sort of like pulp fiction paperbacks is where they were getting published. And a lot of them have just kind of been lost where they don't kind of don't exist anymore. And... Um, so it's it's interesting. There are some small publishers that are trying to sort of bring back some of those books now. But it, yeah, that was really fascinating just kind of reading about the history of women writing in those genres. Yes. So another author, actually, I didn't mention this earlier, but mm -hmm. because Joanna Russ only has six novels, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to. To, um, do episodes about her and also this other author, which I don't know if you're familiar, James Tiptree Jr. Hmm, mm -mm. Okay, so it's that's not her name. It's a woman. Um, mm -hmm. And she wrote under that name because, you know, because yeah. this was the 60s and the 70s when, you know, the, the, uh, oh, yeah. you don't a have to be intelligent did. to know why. But anyway, yep. um, and then she eventually... As the years went by and things got a little better for female writers, she came out as who she is. And my goodness, I cannot remember her name. It's <laughs> Sheldon, Alice Sheldon. That's her name. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm just fascinated about that. And so because of, you know, her taking the, the man's name as her pseudonym, there are books out there all about just her and about why she did that and about her experience navigating the 
very much male dominated world of science fiction at that time. That's so fascinating. Yeah. So I got, I think I got three of her books in today. And basically right now I'm just, I'm like loading up on um, <laughs> all Joanna Russ and all James Tiptree Jr. So that I'll, I will be prepared when I reach the end of ACC. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I Yeah, I'll be interested to kind of see how that goes because I do think it's interesting and a, a lot of times we don't hear people talking about women who are writing in the genre, those genres during that time. Yeah, so so this um, is not that genre, but have you ever seen the film or read the book The Wife? Uh, maybe. Well, it's just it's just like a really good – well, I want, the movie's really good and I have the book. I just haven't read it yet. And it, I mean, that's just basically what it's about. It's about this this author who wins, um, I believe, the Pulitzer Prize. And oh. but he is not the one writing. His wife is the one writing. Interesting. And they. Oh, they, I have not seen this. No, but they, I mean, great. Uh, Glenn Close. Is yeah. The movie is wonderful. really, really good. And um, basically, <laughs> it's just it's interesting because it explores like, OK, so there's two people to a married couple who both want to be writers Mm -hmm. and they want this to be their career. So if you're too, it doesn't matter, male, female, if you're like a recently graduated from college, like poor person, you're going to do what you have to do to make it in this world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. what they do is they realize the woman's better at writing. The man's not as good as writing, but the man's name will get the books published. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but, but then it, it snowballs and it snowballs and all of a sudden she's mm-hmm. this amazing writer and, and it comes to a head where they're, they're basically elderly and they have to go to this big ceremony to celebrate him and he's oh, never wow. even written any of these books. Wow. It's very, very, very fascinating. Interesting. Well, it's interesting because if you look at the history of the the hard sciences, especially in like the 1800s, there, this frequently did happen where there would be married couples where the wife would do a lot of the scientific research and it would all get published under her husband's name. That's crazy. And you have to you have yeah. to wonder, like, how many of how many of these things throughout history happened and, and the truth never came out? Like, we don't yeah. know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a uh, it's very, very interesting. I agree. Okay, one one other thing I'll throw out there: if you're ever looking for something just really fun, <laughs> okay. If you like, I don't. It, it depends on what what you enjoy, but if you enjoy like snarky humor, um, the Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. I've heard of those. Okay, I really love them, it, but it it has to be your sense of humor. It's one of those things where like. Whether or not you will enjoy these books probably depends on your sense of humor. I think they're hilarious, but they're mostly novellas, and they're from the perspective of Murderbot, who is this biological AI who's hacked his governor module and, like, you know, could just, like, kill people, but mostly wants to spend his time watching, like, like streaming soap operas in his head, but can't <laughs> because of things that happen. <laughs> That's awesome. Just, like, so they're, those are a lot of fun. Um that sounds that sounds slightly similar to um, at least tonally to um, how to live safely in a science fictional universe. Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'll have to check that one that one out. But yeah, those are those are really fun. So far, there's I think the next novella is just about to come. So there's four novellas, one full length novel, and then another novella just came out. Yeah, so. I think book six I think is what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't read that one yet, but I've read all the other ones, and they're they're kind of a blast. And you know what? What um, attracted me to these ones was the covers. I, I dig this cover art a lot. They're great covers. Yeah, I love the cover art too. Um, how much stock do you put in the cover of a book? Uh, probably more than I should sometimes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but you, you know, I mean, I I think if I don't like the cover, it's probably going to require me hearing someone I trust telling me they think I should read it. Okay. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, have you ever chosen a book j- simply based on the cover and ended up loving it? Yeah, yeah I, but also the opposite has happened. You know, uh, it can go it can go both ways. That sucks. But you know, I think there is something to be said for covers because there is a science sort a sort of a science, I guess, to the marketing behind it, and they are trying to reach a particular audience. So I figure if I love a cover, it might be because I'm the audience they're trying to reach. Okay. Maybe. I used to say back when I worked at um, 
the bookstore, and this might make make me sound like a a hole, but I used to say I I don't read books uh, where on the cover the if the author's name is bigger than the title, I don't read it because then they're just selling the book on the author's name. That, that doesn't mean the book is any good. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah. But but then but then like six years later, I'm a massive Michael Crichton fan, and he <laughs> all of his books, his name is half the cover. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I should take that back. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I mean, I think a lot of times authors like that, they they're what they're able to do is write things that are entertaining page turners. And there is, you know, there's something of a, a, a trick to being able to do that. Absolutely. Uh, reading a Michael Crichton novel is, is it really is like watching a blockbuster movie. It's the same. Mm-hmm. It's practically the same experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what he does. He knows how to do it. He does it well. And, you know, it's worked out well for him. So totally. It's good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Well, do you have any kind of final thoughts on any of this? Not really. You know, it's it's weird because I I want to be educated on these topics. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, I don't necessarily know all that much, but. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's why I am coming to these novels, these uh, authors like Joanna Russ, so that I can become educated. And not just that, but I also just want like other opinions, you know, like my opinion is not the one that matters the most, Uh, Mm. like especially because all three of my co-hosts are women. And Mm -hmm. I just I want to hear what they have to honestly I can't. I want them to read Joanna Russ, and I want to hear what they have to say as modern, you know, women. What they have mm-hmm. to say about this this type of uh, this work. I, I'm very curious to hear what they have to say. Yeah, no, I think I, I think that's good, and I think it's interesting, and and this is part of why too. I I definitely try to make a point of reading from you know a diverse group of authors because I think reading from somebody who has an experience that's different from your own, whether it's, you know, gender or race or sexuality or whatever it is, you know, you learn something new and like, we're, none of us you know, have, to have that all figured out. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But, I agree. Yeah. All right, that about wraps it up. Thank you so much to Bethany for uh, responding to my outreach and trying to do a collaboration. I enjoyed this conversation that we had about when it changed and other things uh, sci-fi related. Uh, Once again, please, if you're interested, check out the Chapter 3 podcast. Chapter 3 podcast is a bi-weekly podcast with new episodes releasing every other Tuesday. Everywhere you get your podcasts, all the regular old channels same places you get this one and bethany also has a youtube channel all about books and it's called beautifully bookish bethany you can find chapter three podcast on instagram and twitter as well at chapter three podcast three being the number um i really hope you guys enjoyed this bonus episode it was not about arthur c clark uh it was not the standard thing that we usually do here but i'm gonna try to actually do more of this kind of thing i have another interview scheduled with um i guess it's a conversation i have another conversation scheduled with another actually a book someone who works in a bookstore which i would i'm excited to uh have that conversation i used to work in a bookstore as well so that might be fun to talk about that Uh, but i'm definitely going to try to do different kind of things these kinds of things um in the future, not just ACC. And as we talked about in this podcast, I, I have every intention of covering uh, Joanna Russ and James Tiptree Jr. Uh, up next. So hopefully if you listen to this and you're a Clark fan, you're also a Joanna Russ fan. Or maybe you've never heard of her and now you're curious and you want to find out what the heck's going on with her. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining me. You can find me on Instagram at the Space Dreamers. Uh, and join me for the next episode. I don't know what it is because I don't know when I'm going to release this. So it'll be a mystery. 
But the fact that you found this episode means that you are cool. And thank you. Uh, Yeah, anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Join me next time. And keep dreaming about space.